parent wants to think about their children growing up without them. Although we realize we can't control their future, we do have the ability to secure it through careful planning. So isn't it time to begin preparing for their future and your dreams for them? When you begin to game plan with life insurance, you're able to focus on what matters most today. Because life isn't about worrying when the storms of life will come. It's about planning on how to dance in the rain. Game plan today. Game plan for life. Contact us today to get started. for both teams before we have the National Anthem. We'll visit Pope County Wildcats. In left field, number 13, Jesse Holden. In center field, number 8, Devin Baskin. In right field, number 12, Tanner Silvers. The third baseman, number 5, Austin Buckner. The shortstop, number 22, Zayden Branham. The second baseman, number 26, Jess Green. The first baseman, number 28, Tucker uh, Lamming. And the catcher, number 20, Z Zaytan Branham. And on the hill for the Polk County Wildcats today, the pitcher, number 11, Colton Kaysen. The uh, Polk County Wildcats are coached by John Tucker, Marshall Beachboard, and Luke Burroughs. for your McMinn Central Chargers. In left field, number 17, Ryan Moore. In center field, number 1, Aiden Clemens. The right fielder, number 3, Austin Evans. The third baseman, number 16, Bryce Hammond. The shortstop, number 7, Devin Paxton. The second baseman, number 12, Hunter Rayburn. The first baseman, number 25, T.O. Tyler Oates. The catcher, number four, Kenson Wilcox. And on the hill today for the Chargers, the pitcher, number two, Zach Derrick. The Chargers are coached for Chris Shepard, Ty West, Todd Oates, Dakota Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand with your attention to the flag in center field as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars 
through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangle Better yet, wait for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome you to the McMinn Central Baseball Field for today's game between the Polk County Wildcats and your McMinn Central Chargers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's a beautiful night for baseball here on Monday night at McMinn Central as McMinn Central hosts District 3 AA opponent Polk County Wildcats. Central enters tonight at 6-12 and on the year, 3-3 three and three in the district. Polk enters with a 2-4 and four record in the district. This has always been a big rivalry, so tonight we'll play a big, big thing into the standings this year as we head towards postseason time. Central enters tonight at number three, tied with Meigs County. Central holds the head-to-head -head matchup against Meigs County, so they are number three, and Polk enters tonight number five in the district. Central is going to be rocking all white with baby blue trim, baby blue hats, so looking good out there. Polk County is wearing a black jersey and pinstripe white pants. So now for the central defense, Zach Derrick on the hill tonight. His battery mate will be Kenson Wilcox. And then from left to right in the outfield, we have Ryan Moore playing left field, Aiden Plemons in center field, Austin Evans in right field. Left to right across the dirt, we have Bryce Hammond at third base, Devin Paxton at shortstop, Hunter Rayburn at second base, and Tyler Oaks at first base. I'm joined tonight by my father, Ron Starr. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, I appreciate you having me back, son. I didn't know if I would get an invitation after last time. I screwed up so many times. I didn't know <laughs> if you'd have me or not, but proud to be here with you. And uh, I never understood the uh, intense rivalry that's here between Polk and Central in every sport until you came over here and started playing. And, and I can remember some tough battles between uh, Chargers and the Wildcats back when you played. Polk County was always the one on the schedule we looked forward to playing. It was always fun both here and down in Benton. Polk County is going to be led off tonight by starting pitcher Colton Kaysen. He's wearing number 11, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate. He's hitting 467 on the year. The first pitch is a called strike from Zach Derrick. Zach Derrick enters tonight with a 3-3 three and three record through 30.2 innings pitched. He's had 33 strikeouts and enters with a 3.65 ERA. Left-handed pitcher for the Chargers. Misses off the inside corner, so it's a one ball, one strike count. Left-handed pitchers in the, at the high school level are rare. You don't see them very often. That one misses up and out, so Derek behind two balls, one strike. That's why at a very young age, I put you on the left-hand side because I thought you would see more right-handers than left-handers. Derek misses outside, three balls, one strike. And then the two biggest games of my high school career, we faced a Minnesota Twins pitcher, left-handed pitcher at Good Pasture. Whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> High hopper to Bryce Hammond at third base. He makes a throw across the diamond to Tyler Oaks for the first out of the inning. So Derek retires Kaysen on five pitches for the, fir for the first out. Next up for Polk County is Austin Buckner. He plays third base tonight for the Wildcats wearing number five. He enters tonight with a 344 batting average hitting from the right-hand side. Last time, we joined, last time we were able to be on the air, Central took one from Kingston here at home. Since then, they've only played three games. They dropped two and picked up one, had a tight game with Red Bank here at home. So they come into tonight not playing in a week. So the guys should be fully rested and ready to go. First pitch is a foul ball down the right field line. Same thing with the second pitch. So Derek quickly ahead, no balls, two strikes, as Buckner fouls one off into his own dugout. Keeping that fastball on the inside corner right now, sawing those right-handers' bats off. 
Sets up on the outside corner. He misses off the outside corner, but that's a good two-strike pitch. They're now ahead one ball, two strikes, one out, nobody on for Polk County. Derek working from the windup. Wilcox, er, Wilcox sets up on the outside corner. Ground ball to Paxton at short. He has trouble picking it, so that's going to be an E6 and allow Buckner to reach first base. Well, it was a routine grounder, really. It should have been played clean, but uh, uh, Paxton struggled a little bit with picking that one up, but uh, hopefully it'll turn into a double play right here for the Chargers. Yeah, hopefully Paxton will have a chance right here to make it up as him, both him and Hunter Rayburn are playing double play depth as Zayden Branham, the shortstop for Polk County, hitting in the three hole, wearing number 22, hitting 200 on the year. He's hitting from the right side of the plate. First pitch misses low from Zach Derrick, so one ball, no strikes, one out, runner on first base. Wilcox sets up on the outside corner. Pitch misses low and inside, so Derek behind two balls, no strikes, working from the stretch. Not much of a lead at first base, of course, with a left-handed pitcher. It's difficult to uh, read till you get used to him anyway. Misses low and in again, so quickly behind three balls, no strikes. Wind's blowing in a little bit here, as is per the normal here at Central. we got to see a little bit of a backwards wind against Kingston, but tonight it's back to its normal Blowing in, so the outfielder's playing pretty shallow out there. That pitch from Derek catches the inside corner, so three balls, one strike count. Middle infielders in Paxton and Rayburn playing double play depth. Oaks holding the runner on at first. Everybody else playing fairly straight up. That one misses off the inside corner for ball four, so Zayden Branham reaches first on the walk. That brings up Tucker Lanning playing first base tonight for Polk County, wearing number 28. He's hitting 276 on the year, and he'll be hitting with men on first and second, one out. Good control with the first two batters. Struggled a little bit here with the last two, so maybe we'll see him, uh, Derek, get it under control now. So Oaks opting not to hold the runner on at first, playing in and potential bunt situation. Hammond playing even with the bag at third base. Paxton and Rayburn both playing double play depth. No movement or bunt shown on the first pitch, and it catches the outside corner. So Derek ahead, no balls, one strike. One pitch away from getting out of the inning. Yeah, good location with that pitch on the outside corner. May see junk right here. Another great pitch right off the outside corner. Looked like a little bit of a cut action, and it paints the outside corner. So Derek ahead, no balls, two strikes. That moves Oaks back behind the runner at first base with a two-strike count. Wilcox sets up on the outside corner. Misses his spot, but he gets the strikeout. So Derek punches him out on three pitches. So that gives the Chargers two outs with a swinging strikeout of landing. That's a big out right there. When that's your number number four hitter uh, in that situation, you get them out with runners on first and second. Now you got two outs. Uh, great, great pitching by Derek there. That was very clutch. And now he faces left-handed hitting Just Green. He plays second base tonight for Polk County, wearing number 26. He's hitting 308 on the year, the first left-handed hitter we've seen. So left-handed Derek working against left-handed Green. Infield playing pretty normal positioning. Derek paints the outside corner with a beautiful pitch. So one ball, one strike. Paxton shading a little bit towards second to keep the runner honest out there, but he will bounce back towards his normal position. Another great pitch from Derek. A little bit of an off-speed down low gets Green swinging. So now he's ahead one ball, two strikes, two outs, two men on for Polk County. After struggling with those two batters, uh, he has come back strong, throwing the ball across the plate now and get him to chase it just a little bit. Wilcox sets up on the outside corner. He comes inside and he blows it right by him. So strike three, back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts recorded by Derek. So that ends the inning. Polk County reaches on an error, but Central leaves him stranded. So they reach on an error and a walk. So two men left on base, no hits, no runs scored. And while Kaysen takes his warm-up pitches, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back. Derek was able to leave two men stranded for Polk County. Central is going to be led off tonight by Hunter Rayburn, wearing number 12, playing second base tonight. He leads the Chargers in hitting this year, hitting 308. so great spot for the leadoff man. He'll be followed by Tyler Oaks and then Zach Derrick. Starting pitcher tonight for Polk County is also their leadoff hitter, Colton Kaysen. He's 4-0 on the year through 30 innings pitched, 53 strikeouts through 30 innings pitched, and he touts a 1.4 ERA. And from what I hear, he's a recent Carson Newman signee. Tall kid, uh, good build for a pitcher. He led with the first pitch with a breaking ball. That was one thing we noticed during his warm-ups. He had a good breaking ball that he liked a lot. That one misses outside with a fastball, so Rayburn quickly ahead, two balls, no strikes. Right-handed pitcher Kaysen working from the windup. Rayburn swinging, fouls one over the first base dugout, two balls, one strike count to Hunter. Good location with that fastball on the outside corner. There's a big difference between being able to throw the ball off that mound and being able to be a pitcher. And apparently Carson Newman has seen something in him. Rayburn fouls one back into the net, so that evens the count at two balls, two strikes. Being what I mean by that is being a pitcher, you hit your spots. Uh, you don't leave it fat down the middle. You try to hit, hit the corners as often as you can. Off-speed yes. pitch, and Rayburn peppers it through the 5-6 hole, so that's a great start for Central as Hunter Rayburn has a leadoff single. He stops at first base, and that's going to bring up big Tyler Oaks playing first base for Central tonight. He's the second leading hitter for Chargers, hitting 306 on the year. He's really been hitting it well as of late, wearing number 25, hitting from the left-hand side of the box. Hunter Rayburn just got the party started for Central with a leadoff single through the 5-6 hole, so now we'll see what Tyler can do. Well, that's what I was talking about. He hung that curveball, kept it in the middle of the plate, and and uh, Rayburn stayed back and drove it to left field. Curveball misses off the outside corner. So Oaks ahead, one ball, no strike. Both first pitches have been a curveball. I would say that's probably his best pitch from what I've seen so far. Rayburn with a conservative lead at first base. Shepard's M.O. is to be aggressive. Kaysen knows that he throws behind him at first. But Rayburn back in, standing. Tyler Oaks with his normal positioning in the box, crowding the play. He turns the show bunt, puts a perfect one down the third baseline that, oh, just goes foul by about a ball. It looked like it had a chance to kick back fair there for a minute. Oaks would have beat that out as they had conceded it to roll foul, and then it does end up foul. So Rayburn will retreat to first. Oaks back into the box with a one ball, one strike count. I doubt they were expecting that from somebody of Tyler's stature. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that either. But uh, he, Coach Shepard, is aggressive and likes to move the base runners quick. So, not a bad idea to get them in the scoring position early. Throws behind Rayburn again at first, and he's back in standing. We haven't seen a lot of bunting from Central this year, but from talking to Coach Shepard, they're going to try to see what they can do early in the game. Throws behind Rayburn once again, and he's back easy. He does dive in that time, but he's back with no issues. A little hit and run here from the left-hand side would be nice if he could drive it uh, to right field between the first and second baseman. It's wide open as the first baseman holds him on. He swings through it. No foul tip. Oh, and now he does call foul tip. So it didn't appear that he got any of the part of the ball, but he does call foul. Rayburn retreats back to first base. Oaks back into the box with a one ball, two strike count. First baseman landing, holding Rayburn on at first, leaving that three, four hole wide open. Third baseman has been playing two steps into the grass, but now with a one ball, two strike count, he'll probably take a step back to even with the bag. We see a quick visit from the catcher, Zanton Branham. A familiar name in the community here is Tucker, and uh, David Tucker's son, John, is the head baseball coach and basketball coach at Polk County High School. So it's John Tucker there. Throws behind Rayburn again, and he's back easily. Oaks enters tonight, hitting safely, reach, hit with a hitting – well, his streak broke against Red Bank, but prior to that he had a seven-game hitting streak, so he's reached base safely in seven of his last eight. Rayburn takes off on the pitch, and he's in there with no problem. So stolen base for Hunter Rayburn as he is now on second after the stolen base. 
That ball missed outside to Tyler Oaks, so two balls, two strike count. Rayburn standing at second with no outs for Central. After seeing that throw, I would expect Shepard to be very aggressive on the bases. Absolutely agree. So Oaks swings through that one, but it gets away from the catcher. We're going to see what the call is there, and he calls him safe at first. So it was a bad throw from the catcher down to first. First base had to pick it. Looked like he was going to be really close over there at first, but Central gets the call. Tucker out to question it. He wants him to discuss with the home plate umpire uh, the call there. I, it, it was close. I don't know if I got him or not, but he did regain control about the same time as the Bam Bam play and a tough call there, particularly when you only have two umpires on the field. It's a, it's a difficult call. And the call remains safe, so Oaks will reach first on the drop third strike. That does move Hunter Rayburn up to third as the ball made it to the backstop. So now we're going to have runners on the corner for three-hole hitter and starting pitcher tonight, Zach Derrick. Wears number two, hits from the right-hand side of the box. He's hitting 273 on the air, but has been hitting it well as of late. Landing appears to be holding Oaks on at first. We'll see how aggressive Shepard wants to be tonight if he wants to see a little hit and run here early in the game with runners on the corners if you trust Derek to swing away. He fouls one straight back into the net. He was right on it, but now he's behind no balls, one strike. I'm old school. I would have sent him on the first pitch. Uh, of course, he would have had to come back with a foul ball, but uh, based on the throw that we saw earlier from the catcher, I would have, I would have sent him right away. It's a little bit bigger lead this time with Lanning holding Oaks on. Does not go. Beautiful curveball that catches the inside corner there. So Derek behind no balls, two strikes. Well, you do have no outs, so you don't want, don't want to out uh, catching the base runner at second base on an attempted steal. Tempts Derek with a high fastball. It misses up. Derek lays off of it. So one ball, two strikes. Oaks on first after reaching on the drop third strike. Rayburn advanced to third. He led off the game with a single. Derek getting with a one ball, two strike count. He's right on it once again. Fouls it straight back into the net. And I'll be shocked if we don't see that curveball right here. I was surprised to see it then, to be honest with you. He was throwing a good one in warm-ups and has, and has been throwing a pretty good one during the game, during this inning. And there it is, and he freezes Derek for a called strike three. So after back-to-back -back high fastballs, he comes back in and drops in that curveball. So Derek goes down looking for the first out of the inning. That brings up Aiden Plemons playing center field for the Chargers tonight. He wears number one, hits from the right-hand side of the box. He's hitting 245 on the year. Right now he'll be hitting with Tyler Oaks on first, Hunter Rayburn on third, and one out. Nice pitch by the Polk County pitcher. He, he broke that one perfectly and froze the hitter there for the first out. Hangs another curveball there, and Plemons shoots it through the 5-6 hole. That's going to score Rayburn with ease and move Oaks up to second. So Aiden Plemons with an RBI single through the 5-6 hole puts Central on the board first, one to nothing. Hunter Rayburn led off the game with a single, stole second, advanced to third on Oaks's drop third strike. And then he scores on Aiden Plemons' RBI single through the 5-6. So Central quickly up one to nothing here in the bottom of the first and still got runners in scoring position with one out. That brings up Devin Paxton playing short tonight for Central. Where's number seven hitting from the right-hand side of the plate? He's hitting 182 on the year, but he started out the year red hot. So Central likes to see him hitting here with men in scoring position. Rayburn stayed back on the breaking ball and drove it through the hole and scored the first run of, drove it the first run of the game in. So Paxson swings through the first pitch, then he shoots the first, the second pitch down the first baseline, just missing by a few feet. So he's quickly behind no balls, two strikes. Aiden Plemons on first, Tyler Oaks on second. Not holding Plemons on at first. Shortstop playing normal position, second base playing a double play depth type position. Outfielder center field is playing extremely deep out there. Lots of room for Devin Paxson to drop one in. But he goes up with that fastball. It seems to be his go-to with no balls, two-strike count. That's back-to-back -back hitters, and he blows Paxson, blows it by him. So that's a swinging strikeout for the second out of the inning. That brings up the DH, Corbin Frisbee, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate, wearing number 22. He's DHing tonight, but he splits time with Wilcox behind the plate. He's hitting 100 on the year. Good location by the Polk County pitcher on that last uh, – batter when he threw his fastball, but he got up out of the zone and Paxton chased it. So Frisbee swings through the second pitch. He took the first pitch low, so one ball, one strike count. 
two men on for the Chargers. Gets the call on the outside corner, so that was a pretty pitch, and he was rewarded with it. So one ball, two strikes. I'm sure Zach Derrick will love that zone. A little generous there, I think, with that call. Corbin Frisbee bounces one back to the pitcher on one hop, and he throws it to first and retires Frisbee. But Central does take a 1-0 lead as Aiden Plemons had an RBI single through the 5-6 hole to put Central up 1-0 as we head to the top of the second. And while Zach Derrick takes some warm-up pitches, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Central jumped out to a 1-0 lead on Aiden Plemons' RBI single in the bottom of the first. As we head to the top of the second, Polk County is going to be led off by catcher Zanton Branham. He wears number 20, hits from the right-hand side of the plate. He's hitting 258 on the year. Derek catches the inside corner with a fastball, so no balls, one strike. He's working quick, and that's a good sign, but he misses outside there with a curveball. One ball, one strike count. Good to come back out on the mound with a one-run lead here in the second. Swings at the third pitch. It's a very slow roller to Paxson. That's going to be a very tough play. But he makes an excellent play as he throws on the run and gets the runner out at first by half a step. So great play. That was sort of an in-between ball between Hammond and Paxton. Hammond comes in, or Paxton comes in, makes the throw on the run for a 6-3 put out. So good start to the inning from Zach Derrick and the, his boys behind him. That brings up Cade Brewer, the DH, number 21. He's hitting 273 on the year, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate. Hammond would normally have fielded that ball, but I think he was playing up for potential bunt and – what a great play by Devin. I mean, that's uh, a, a tough catch and throw there, but the throw was right on the money. Derek misses off the inside corner, one ball, no strikes. And, yes, that was a very tough play. He was moving to his backhand, having to throw across his body. Got the runner by half a step, so great play all the way around. Derek misses off the outside corner, two balls, no strike. Misses inside again, so three balls, no strikes to Brewer, the DH for Polk County. What a beautiful day. I mean, it's a great day God's given us here to uh, see a lot of athletics going on around the campus here at Central. It's a busy day here in Inglewood as both baseball and softball and soccer are playing. Zach Derrick misses off the inside corner for a four-pitch walk to Cade Brewer. So that puts him on first base, brings up Tanner Silvers. He's playing right field, wears number 12, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate, hitting 200 on the year. He'll be hitting with Cade Brewer on first base. Derek back to the stretch. Wilcox sets up on the inside corner. He turns to show bunt, pops it up, but it gets out of play behind the net. So no balls, one strike count. Hammond playing two, three steps in front of the grass over there, so they're definitely expecting the bunt. Oaks holding the runner on at first base. Good opportunity here, I think, for a uh, throw over to first. The runner may be breaking. Shows Bunt again. Right back to Derek, who turns and fields it. Throws a strike over to Tyler Oaks at first base for the second out of the inning. So that's going to be a 1-3 put out on the sack Bunt for Tanner Silvers. That does move Cade Brewer up to second base. And that brings up the nine-hole spot for Polk County. Jesse Holden plays left field for Polk County, wearing number 13, hitting 250 on the year. He'll be hitting with two outs, man on second. 
Chargers currently leading one to nothing. Plemons playing very shallow in center field. Derek misses up and in with the first pitch, so one ball, no strikes. Yeah, the right fielder and the center fielder, both for the Chargers, are really in. So it's a big old boy. He bats down the order, but he's a big kid. Misses low and inside, two balls, no strikes. Big difference from the way Polk County's playing defense. Their outfield is playing extremely deep. Central, maybe knowing the wind a little bit better, playing a little shallow. Yeah, that's that's a good point there. Two balls, no strike count. Derek paints it right down the middle, so two balls, one strike. This will be a big out for Derek and the Chargers if they can retire the nine hole and have the leadoff man leading off next inning for Polk County. A little bit of a – that's going to be a tough play for Rayburn. That was an awkward swing. It was it, almost off of his hands. Gets it right over Derek's head, takes a cue ball kind of spin to Rayburn, tries to throw it to first and throws it a little bit wide. So that's probably going to be an E4 on Rayburn. And that's going to keep the man at – or move the man up. No, keep the man at second as he reached second on the sack bunt. He did not move up on that. I'm not exactly sure why he didn't move up on it because there's two outs, so he should have been running on the crack of the bat. But Chargers aren't complaining. So now we have men on first and second. Ground ball to Paxton at shortstop. So no damage done there. And he flips it to Hunter Rayburn at second for the 4-3 put out. So Polk County leaves two men on. No runs scored, one error from Central, and that's going to roll us to the bottom of the second. We're going to be led off by Austin Evans, followed by Bryce Hammond and Kenson Wilcox. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Central currently leads one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second. Derek was able to leave two men stranded there. Polk County's left four men on, reached by two errors, but nothing to show of it. Central's going to be led off in the bottom of the second by Austin Evans, playing right field tonight for the Chargers, hitting from the right-hand side of the box. He shows bunt, puts a hard one down the third baseline, but it goes foul. So no balls, one strike. Nice pink bat in pink batting gloves. Um, Back in the 70s when I played, I don't think you would see those colors on the field. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. He's prepared for a night game. So that one catches the middle of the plate. So no balls, two strikes to Austin Evans. He's hitting 100 on the year, wearing number three, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate, playing right field tonight with Zach Derrick on the hill. Well, there may be a story behind that. Um, my mother died of breast cancer, so there may be – you know, something there that he's honoring somebody with that. So. Very well could be. So Evans granted a very late timeout call there. Then he misses low and inside, so one ball, two strikes to Evans. I'm surprised that he was granted that timeout because it looked like the pitcher was already mid-wind up. Yeah, a little surprising there, already well into motion to the plate. That one's a high bouncer, two hops to the shortstop, who catches it, flips it to first with a clean throw, so Evans retired on a 6-3 put out. That's going to bring up third, third baseman Bryce Hammond, wearing number 16, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate, hitting 255 on the year. He's going to be hitting with no men on, one out. What was that kid's name that pitched for Polk County when you played it through so hard? 
I can't remember what his name was. Was they it had Will? A, they had a few good ones. Yeah, Will Phillips was yes, one of them. Brandon the Bean one. was another one. Yeah, Will Tracy Phillips. Tracy Beard. They had several good pitchers, both from left and right-hand side. Hammond hits the first pitch to the third baseman who was playing in, expecting a bunt. Pulls landing off the base at first, but he applies the tag to Hammond on Hammond, so he'll be retired on the 5-3 put out for the second out of the inning. That brings up catcher Kenson Wilcox for the Chargers. He wears number four, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate, hitting 191 on the year. He'll be hitting with the bases empty and two outs. See if he can flip the line up to Hunter Rayburn, who got the party started in the bottom of the first. Good to see him take the first pitch there, even though it is a strike. It's been a quick work for Case in this inning. Wilcox takes the first pitch, strike behind no balls, one strike, swings through the second pitch, no balls, two strikes, two outs. Kaysen is working extremely quick. A little cue ball shot to Lanning, but he fields it at first base, so Wilcox will be retired on the three unassisted put out for the third out of the inning, so Kaysen makes quick work of the Chargers in the bottom of the second. That's going to roll us to the top of the third. Polk County will be led off by third baseman Austin Buckner, shortstop Zayden Branham, then followed by Tucker Lanning. While Zach Derrick gets ready, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. As we head to the top of the third, Central leading one to nothing. Neither team scored in the second inning. Polk County is going to be led off by third baseman Austin Buckner. He reached on an error by the shortstop Paxton in the first, wearing number five, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate. First pitch swinging, fouls it down the right field line, way out of place. So Derek ahead, no balls, one strike. Oh, I remember when you were playing, and we were down in Benton playing at Polk County. Derek catches, oh, nope, it misses low and outside, so one ball, one strike. I found out real quick, I, I think you were a sophomore or junior, and you had three doubles and a single, and I think five RBIs. Foul ball down the right field line once again, so Derek quickly ahead, one ball, two strike. Last time you came up, the triplet stuck it in your back, uh, the coach, so <laughs> hit you intentionally, so I, I bit my tongue. I was a good dad. I didn't say anything, but I sure wanted to. Well, that speaks to the rivalry. That This was a big game when we were in high school. You could not find a seat in this place or down at Benton. There were chairs lining all the walls, lining the outfield. It was everywhere. It was a fun, fun game. So that one fouls back again. So Derek's still ahead, one ball, two strikes. I asked Ryan Qualls, a good friend of yours, that he was catching. I said, did he throw at him on purpose? He said, oh, yes, he did. <laughs> Ryan would definitely be the first one to admit that. Check swing, and he goes around, so Derek punches him out swinging. So one one out there on the swinging strikeout of Buckner. So that brings up shortstop Zayden Branham, wearing number 22, hitting from the right-hand side. He reached on a four-pitch walk in the top of the first. Plemons playing shallow still out in center. So is the right fielder, Austin Evans, more playing a little deeper in left field. Doesn't get the call on the outside corner, but it's a great pitch from oh, good Zach Derrick. Good location, good location. 
Moves to the inside corner this time, but misses up and out. So two balls, no strikes. Both look pretty good to me, both those pitches. Good pitch right back up the middle, and it gets through Derek and Paxson for a single from Zayden Branham. Paxson almost got there, but it was just out of his reach. So that's going to be a single right back through the box for Zayden Branham. That's going to bring up first baseman Tucker Lanning. He struck out swinging in the first. He'll be hitting now with Branham on first base. One out, both Rayburn and, and Paxton playing double play depth. Oaks holding the runner on at first. Hammond playing even with the bag over at third. Ground ball right to Paxton. Perfect chance for a double play. Oh, but he boots it. So it gets through him to, to out to left field. So he's going to reach. Lanning will reach first on an E6. That's a tough break. Well, when you're that age at the shortstop on an easy grounder like that, unfortunately you're thinking more about the throw back back to second base. Got to catch it first. Got to catch it first and then make the throw, even if you just get one out of it. So that puts Landing on first, moves Branham up to second, and brings up just Green. He struck out swinging to end of the top of the first. Now he's hitting with men on first and second. Oaks playing in front of the bag at first. Derek misses up and end to the left-handed Green. Hammond playing even with the bag at third base. Rayburn and Paxton both playing double play depth up the middle. Derek misses low and outside with a little bit of an off-speed pitch, so two balls, no strikes. Where are we in the order here? This is their five hole. Mm -hmm. So five, six, seven with one out. Oh, he, he has the runner in no man's land out at second. Derek flips it to Hammond at third. He's going to run him down, run him down, run him down, and flip to Raven for the out. Perfectly executed rundown by Central as it only took one throw from Derek to Hammond and then back to Rayburn. So two throws for a put out that's perfect. Kept landing at first base. So perfectly executed by Central. Yeah, I, they played that very well as far as um, – people following up after the throw and getting in position where they're supposed to be. I don't know what was going on with the runner, if he was going to steal, try to attempt to steal third, or if he got too far off and got caught. I'm, I'm not sure what was happening there, but a big out. It looked like he was trying to time Derek's move. We hadn't seen him throw behind a runner at second, and he caught him off guard there. Did a great job. That would have been an easy opportunity for a balk because he did break very quickly, but he stepped off, flipped it to him, and got the out. So Derek misses up. So one ball, one strike. That ball is going to fall in front of Moore out in left field for a single. So now that rundown out is huge because that very easily could have tied the game for Polk County. But now the single just advances landing to second and puts Green on first after his single. And you have two outs, men on first and second for Zanton, Zanton Branham, the catcher, wearing number 20. He was retired on a 6-3 put out from Paxton to Oaks in the top of the second. Derek misses low and inside. Less batter for Polk, almost like a uh, uh, softball slap to the left-hand side. He didn't swing through the ball at all, but hit it just enough to fall in front of the left fielder. That's exactly what it looked like, and Derek misses up and in, so two balls, no strikes. Men on first and second for Polk County, which they've had in every inning so far with nothing to show of it, so we'll see if Derek can continue battling and get out of this inning. Catches the outside corner, so two balls, one strike. If he gets that call, it's going to be a good night. Yeah, he didn't get it a batter or two before that, but he did get that call then, and that's a big strike. If he can live out there, he's going to be tough to hit. Does it again and blows it by him. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. Good battle back from a two-ball, no-strike count from Derek. Now he's got a chance to get a punch out here and leave two more men on base for Polk County. Almost punches him out, but he just catches enough of it for a foul ball, fouls it straight back into the net. So the count remains two balls, two strikes, two outs, two men on for Polk County. Central leading one to nothing here in the top of the third. Big out here early in the game. I mean, get this guy out and don't have, don't have bases loaded here in the third inning. Tries to catch that outside corner again, but misses way out. So full count, likely see the runners moving from Polk County. So a hit would definitely score one here. We'll see what Derek opts to go with. i got to imagine we're going to see his fastball. That's been his go-to pitch tonight. Wilcox sets up on the inside corner. 
turns and looks the runner back at second. He wasn't going anywhere until after he's already thrown it. He will be moving on the pitch, but nothing early. They've already seen what happens there, so I can't imagine they'll do that again. Blows it by him, so that's a huge strikeout for Zach Derrick and the Chargers as Polk County leaves two more men on base. They did have two singles in the inning, but nothing to show for it as Branham goes down swinging. That leaves two more men on for Polk County. They left two men on in every inning so far with nothing to show for it. They did. Central had one error. Polk County had two hits, left two men on base. Central's coming up to hit in the top of the third, or the bottom of the third, sorry, right at the top of the order in Hunter Rayburn, Tyler Oaks, and Zach Derrick. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back as we head to the bottom of the third. Central leads one to nothing after scoring with the top of the lineup, getting the party started in the bottom of the first. And we're right back to the top of the order here in the bottom of the third with Hunter Rayburn leading off. He's one for one on the night with a single through the five six hole and later came around to score on Aiden Plemons RBI. Single exactly through the same spot Rayburn hit it. Big strikeout to, to, to end the top of the third there with the first and second three two count runners moving. Rayburn first pitch swinging. It's hit into no man's land a little bit out in center field, but the second baseman corrals it for the first out. So Rayburn one pitch, one out on the fly out to second. That brings up Tyler Oaks, number 25, playing first base. He's 0 for 1, but he did reach base on his strikeout as it was dropped by the catcher and then a close play at first. He did reach, so he's 0 for 1 on the night tonight. He'll be facing Kaysen that's pitching from the windup, faced him out of the stretch last at bat. Catcher sets up on the inside corner. Oaks swinging at the first pitch, fouls it back into the net, so no balls, one strike. And, yes, that was a huge strikeout from Zach Derrick and the Chargers to end the top of the third. Yes, that was a pretty big threat there taking place. And a great, great pitch by Derrick to get that out there with two men on. Curveball misses off the outside corner, so Oaks even at one ball, one strike. Derek and the Chargers defense has been in some tight spots just about in every inning, but has been able to escape damage as Polk has left two men on in all three innings so far. Oaks fouls that one straight back into the net, so one ball, two strike count. Yeah, a few walks by Derek and uh, a couple, two or three errors by the Charger defense have put runners in scoring position all three innings. But still goose egg on the board. And that's all that matters at the end of the day. Oaks hitting with a one ball, two strike count, one out, nobody on. 
outfield for Polk County is still playing extremely deep out there. Kaysen blows it by Tyler Oaks for a swinging strikeout. So that's going to bring up pitcher Zach Derrick. He's 0 for 1 on the night. He went down looking on Kaysen's probably his best pitch of the night on a two-strike curveball that buckled Derrick there in the top of the first. But now he hits with no men on, two outs. Central leading one to nothing. Ball misses low and out, so Derek takes a first pitch ball. One ball, no strikes. Good breaking ball, real good breaking ball. I just, I think of you in the labrum surgery you had in college. Ground ball to short, and he boots it, so Derek's going to reach on an E6, so that's a good two out base runner for Central. Hopefully we could take advantage of it here with Derek reaching first base and rolling it to Aiden Clemens, center fielder for the Chargers. He's one for one on the night. He's been hitting the ball very well. He had an RBI single through the 5-6 hole to score Hunter Raybert, and that's the only run of the night so far. Both teams have had men on base, but that's the only run. Uh, what I was talking about with the curveball, uh, when you play fall, summer, high school, all, all the way around, give very little breaks and throw too many curveballs, uh, something bad can happen. You're, <laughs> you're proof of that. Plemons fouls it straight back into the net, so no balls, one strike. Yeah, tending to see a lot of arm injuries in pitchers all the way up to the major leagues. Yeah, they were talking the other night when I was watching the Braves play about the, uh, uh, the time clock that they put on the pitch um, is making a difference and possibly causing those injuries. Throw behind the runner at first, but he's back safely. That was a very quick move, but back there safely at first base. It's a pinch runner. I didn't catch who it is at first base. Caden Shamley pinch running for Zach Derrick at first. That ball catches the outside corner, so Plemons behind, no balls, two strikes. Shamley on first base, pinch running for Derrick. Another throw behind him, but he's back safely diving into first. Stay back on this breaking ball, or, or don't swing on the high fastball. It'll be one of the two, in my opinion. Catcher sets up way outside. Shamley breaks on the pitch. Much better throw from the catcher, but Shamley in there with no problem. So that's going to be a stolen base and put a man in scoring position for Plemons. If he can shoot another one through that 5-6 hole or even stay back and shoot it to the right-hand side, it's going to be a second RBI of the night. This is exactly who Central wants up at the plate right now. Oh, but he blows it by him. Kaysen with a good fastball takes Plemons down swinging. So that leaves Shamley, who was running for Derrick, stranded at second base. Central leaves one man on. No hits. No runs, no errors, and that'll send us to the top of the fourth where Polk County will be led off by Cade Brewer, followed by Tanner Silvers, and then Jesse Holden. While Derek takes a few warm-up pitches, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Central currently leading one to nothing. They scored in the bottom of the first on Aiden Plemons' RBI single, and then, then there's been no action after that. Plenty of men left on base, but no runs scored. Zach Derrick still on the hill for the Chargers. Cade Brewer, the DH, leading off for Polk County. 
He fouls the first pitch straight back into the net. He's 0 for 0 on the night. He reached on a walk in the top of the second. A lot of brewers down in Polk County, too. I wonder if he's uh, related to any of those that uh, I played with back years ago. So maybe family. Very well could be. Another one fouled straight back into the net. So Derek quickly ahead, no balls, two strikes. Back-to-back -back fastballs, so we'll see what he comes with on the no, no balls, two strike count. I think Rusty Brewer, if I remember, I was the football coach at Polk County. For, that's his son. Okay. Comes back with a fastball in the outside corner. A high, high hopper to Derek. That's going to be a really tough play, but he makes an excellent throw over to first base with Tyler Oaks punching him out at first. So a 1-3 put out retires Brewer for the first out of the inning. That brings up Tanner Silvers, the right fielder for Polk County. He's 0 for 0 also on the night. He had a sack bunt right back to Zach Derrick in the top of the second. Big hop. Uh, pitcher fielded. Uh, the ball and threw it to first. A little help there. There's a big boy running down the baseline. So, been somebody quicker. They might not have got him. First pitch back into the net. So, no balls, one strike. It was almost like that turf acted like a trampoline right there. It shot that ball way up in there. But Derek with quick hands was able to get the out at first. Quickly ahead, no balls, two strikes again as another one's fouled straight back into the net. Derek working quick and efficiently here in the top of the fourth. Well, it's a big help, you know, when you got – Got a pitcher that's not only throws well, but can field his position. That's important. Beautiful pitch. Catches the outside corner for strike three from Zach Derrick. So Tanner Silvers is retired looking for the second out of the inning. That rolls it to Jesse Holden, the left fielder. He reached on that weird base hit right over or error on the second baseman. It was a tough play that bounced right over Derrick's head in the, bottom, in the top of the second. Derek misses outside. That's the first ball he's thrown all inning. Great inning so far for Zach Derek. Another foul ball straight back into the net. So one ball, one strike, two outs, nobody on here in the top of the fourth. Central currently leading one to nothing. Derek doing a great job. I, I do not do not recall any balls that have been hit extremely hard by Polk County. A lot of infield and bloop singles to the outfield. He blows it by him ahead. One ball, two strikes, two outs. They've really only made good contact on one, the, the base hit that was right between him and Paxton there in last inning. Foul ball right down the right field line, so one ball, two strikes. We've not seen a curveball yet this inning. I'll be shocked if we don't see it here on a one ball, two strike count. Wilcox sets up low and in, then he calls time there at the plate. So that typically set up for that low and in curveball. Pound it right at his back foot. Yes, sir. Throw it there. Sets up outside. Comes with a fastball in the inside corner, and he blows it by him. So two strikeouts on the inning for Zach Derrick. Retires Polk County in order. Nobody on. Nobody left. Nobody left on. No runs. No hits. No errors there in the top of the fourth. As that's the first inning that Polk County hasn't had anybody reach base. So great fourth inning from Zach Derrick. That's going to bring us to the bottom of the fourth, where Central is going to be led off by Devin Paxton, followed by Corbin Frisbee and Austin Evans. As Central leads one to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Good looking family. Welcome back as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Central still leading one to nothing after scoring on a Plemons RBI single in the bottom of the first. Going to be led off right now in the bottom of the fourth by Devin Paxton. Playing shortstop tonight, he struck out in his first at bat. 
Central leading one to nothing in what's been a pretty solid pitcher's duel so far. Yeah, very, very few run. Oh, well, there have been several base runs. Paxton hits it hard to third base, but it's picked cleanly and a good throw across the diamond retires Paxton at first for a 5-3 put out. First pitch swinging. He made good contact, but hit it right at him. That's going to bring up the DH, Corbin Frisbee, who last batted in the first inning. Grounded one right back to Case in the pitcher, so he's 0 for 1 on the night, wearing number 22, hitting from the right-hand side of the plate. It's the first inning we've sort of seen Polk County's outfield take a few steps in. They've been playing extremely deep. Case and paints the outside corner to get ahead. No balls, one strike. Polk pitchers look good the last couple of innings. He's uh, been very consistent. Frisbee catches one off the hands and pops it up to the catcher, so he's retired for the second out of the inning. That's going to bring up Austin Evans. He's 0 for 1 on the night. He grounded out to short in the top in the bottom of the second. Now he's hitting with nobody on. Two outs, two quick outs for Kaysen and the Wildcats. So hopefully Evans can prolong this inning, see a few pitches. Yeah, I. Like you, I think I would uh, make him throw a couple here, or unless he just sees something he really wants to jump on early. But uh, make him work a little bit here. Turns to show Bun. He did the same thing last time. Man, he is. Oh, that may come back fair. Oh, wow. That was very close and a very risky play by the third baseman there to let that thing roll all the way out. It narrowly missed the corner of the bag there at third. But it's going to be a, long, a first pitch strike there as Evan squares to Bunt just misses the line by a couple of inches. So good idea. He did the same thing in his first at bat. Good bun attempt. Um, at the major league level, you would work on the infield where that one would float back or drift back <laughs> in, but uh, that one almost did. Hadn't seen much of that curveball since the first couple of innings, but that's a pretty pitch as Kaysen's ahead. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Great breaking ball. I can see why he's uh, – uh, playing further after high school. He's a pretty good pitcher. He's done very well tonight. Central only scraping one run in the bottom of the first. Not much action after that. Evans hitting with no balls, two strikes, and he blows it by him for strike three. So Central down in order here in the bottom of the fourth as Evans goes down swinging. So quick inning there. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base, and that's going to roll us to the top of the fifth inning. Polk County rolls it back to the top of their lineup where the pitcher Colton Kaysen will lead off, followed by Austin Buckner and Zayden Branham. As Derek gets ready, we'll take a few seconds, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. As we head to the top of the fifth, Central leads one to nothing as they scored in the bottom of the first, and then there's been no noise after that. Derek throwing a good game through four innings. He's allowed two hits, walked two, and struck out six. First pitch is a breaking ball that takes for a first pitch strike, so Derek had no balls, one strike. Through four, he had thrown 66 pitches, so he's working quick and effective. That ball misses down, so one ball, one strike count. Good pitch in that situation, though. Breaking ball down that. Uh, down in the turf, but he didn't go for it. 
Colton Kaysen, the leadoff hitter for Polk County. Hits one into the left center gap, and it's misplayed by Plemons as he was playing shallow. Gets to the left center field gap, and Kaysen will be in with a stand-up double to lead off the fifth for Polk County. Good location, good swing. He put it right there, and yes, so uh, Plemons and, uh, and the center outfield in general been playing shallow most of the night, and uh, that one had some giddy up on it, got between them in the gap real fast. Uh, Plemons did a good job of getting to it and holding the runner to a double. That's the best contact we've seen from any Polk County hitter tonight is that one shoots into the left center field gap, and when it hit the grass, it took off like a rocket, and Kaysen goes into second with a stand-up double. That brings up Austin Buckner, the third baseman for Polk County. His first pitch swinging. It's a high pop-up down the right field line, but the wind's going to carry it out of play for a first pitch strike. So no balls, one strike. Nobody out. Austin Buckner hitting for Polk County. Kaysen just led off the inning with a double to left center. Derek working from the stretch. Oaks playing extremely shallow at first, expecting a bunt. Hammond playing even with the bag at third base. Very conservative lead at second. Good pitch from Derek. Gets him ahead. No balls, two strikes. Conservative lead, but a huge secondary lead out there as yeah, he bounced halfway to third base. Good base running there by the runner for Polk County on the bag. That, playing it safe at the beginning, but taking advantage of it after on the secondary. Good pitch from Derek. Gets a ground ball to Paxson. Runner breaks for third. He comes up throwing across the diamond. Beats the runner by a couple steps for the first out for a 6-3 put out. But that does advance Kaysen to third base. Because that was good base running by him to move up to third. Good play from Paxton taking the sure out at first base. That brings up the three-hole hitter, Zayden Branham, the shortstop. He walked in his first at bat, reached on a single, and then he was the one that got caught in the pickle out there and forced out at second base. Shepard decides to bring the infield in as the tying run is on third base. First time Polk County's seen a runner on third tonight. Derek blows one by him for a first pitch strike. He was swinging for the downs on that one. Yeah, just... What you do in this situation is try to hit it somewhere in the grass in the outfield to drive that either fly ball or base hit to drive that run in. One hopper to Paxson. Runner takes off from third to home, and he makes a perfect throw, but he, oh, he gets under the tag at home plate. Gets under the tag at home plate. That's probably the right call. That's tough to see from a central standpoint, but that's probably the right call. He did get under it. So that ties the game as he scored. Great play from Paxson. Just a good slide and a high tag gets him in there to score the run. So that's going to be a fielder's choice for Branham and an RBI. So that's going to put him on first base, tie the game for Polk County, and that brings up Tucker Lanning, first baseman for Polk County. He struck out in his first at bat and then singled in his – or sorry, reached on an error in his second at bat. Right now he's hitting with Branham on first. Ball hit right back to Derek on a one-hopper, flips to Paxson at short, turns and throws it to first, and Oaks with a wonderful pick at first base. So double play, gets Central out of the inning. That's huge. Runner went in hard there at second base and took out Paxson. Shepard out to talk to the umpires a little bit. Took a little bit of exception to that slide. But So this is what Polk County Central Baseball is all about right here. It's getting a little interesting. This was always a fun game. So we'll see how things go as Polk County ties the game in the top of the fifth. And that rolls it to the bottom of the fifth with Central's going to be led off by Bryce Hammond, followed by Kenson Wilcox, and it will roll to the top of the order in Hunter Rayburn. Kaysen back to the mound for Polk County as he takes a few pitches. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Bryce Hammond leading off for the Chargers. He's 0 for 1 on the night, grounded out to third in his first at bat. Polk County tied the game in the top of the fifth. On a ground ball that was hit to shortstop, Paxton came up to throw to home, but the ball was there in time. The tag was high, and the runner got in there below the tag. It was a good call. Umpire was in good position. Tough break for Central, but Polk County being very aggressive. as That was the first opportunity they've had to score all night. Kaysen still on the mound for Polk County. First pitch breaking ball has Hammond swinging, so no balls, one strike. Yeah, that I, like I was telling you during the break, I was surprised the runner on third for Polk broke to the plate. Uh, Paxton made a great play. It was just throw throw was perfect, just tagged him high. Hammond behind, no balls, two strikes. Nobody on here in the bottom of the fifth. Catcher sets up way outside, and he paints his spot, and Hammond goes down swinging for the first out of the inning. So that's going to bring up Kenson Wilcox, the catcher for the Chargers. He grounded out to the first baseman in his first at bat in the second inning, getting a second swing here in the bottom of the fifth. After him, it will roll to the top of the order, so it would be really big if Wilcox can find a way to reach base. Yeah, and they get something started somehow, just get a base runner because the Pitcher's in a groove right now. He's throwing very well. Ball must have missed off the inside corner. That looked like a really good pitch from up here, but Central will take any break they can get. So one ball, no strikes. Yeah, look, <laughs> look good from up here, that's for sure. Sets up in the same spot this time. Misses his spot and misses low and outside. So two balls, no strikes. Umpire says that one missed low. Wilcox taking all the way, takes a strike, little delayed call there, but two balls, one strike to Kenson Wilcox, who was taking all the way there with a two ball, no strike count. Takes one up and out, so three balls, one strike. This is a big at bat, whether he reaches or not. That's a big at bat. He's making him throw pitches. Yeah, this deep in the count and for a long, for quite a period. And that one nicks Wilcox. Oh, well, we'll see. Looks like the umpire was going to make some kind of call there, but he doesn't as Wilcox reaches on the hit by pitch. So that's a big at bat. He saw five pitches there and then gets hit by a pitch. So it puts him on first, rolls it to the top of the lineup, and Hunter Rayburn, he's one for two on the night. Austin Jacobs pinch running for the catcher, Kenson Wilcox at first base. Rayburn had a single in the top of the first, to lead, or the bottom of the first, sorry, to lead off the game for Central. Later came around to score the only run of the game so far for the Chargers. He'll be hitting now with Jacobs pinch running for Wilcox, who just was hit by a pitch. I think that's what the umpire was discussing with Coach Shepard there was uh, if he was going to use the designated runner for the catcher uh, right after the ball four count. Good point there. That one misses off the inside corner, so one ball, no strikes. Rayburn swinging, hits one down the right field line, but it goes foul. So I believe it's a one ball, one strike count to Hunter Rayburn. Top of the order here. Need to produce here in the fifth inning. This is a good chance to get Zach Derrick some support, who's been throwing a great game for Central. Jacobs with an aggressive lead at first base. He sees that and throws behind him, but he's back safely. Make something happen here. Swings through it, so two strikes to Hunter Rayburn. Took a good hack at that one, just blew it by him. So now he's going to choke up a little bit and see if he can put the ball in play here and see what happens. Breaking ball, keep the hands back, drive it thing to right field. Throws behind Jacobs again at first base, but he's back safely. Right fielder's playing to the right of the scoreboard. He's playing way over towards the line, leaving that right center gap wide open. That gap is huge. Breaking ball gets Rayburn swinging, popped up to third base. So Jacobs took off towards second, but he's back at first. So that's going to be a fly out to third base for Hunter Rayburn for the second out of the inning. That brings up Tyler Oaks. He's 0 for 2 on the night with two strikeouts, but he'll be hitting with Jacobs on first. Reach for that one just a little bit. I think it's a breaking ball. He, he went 
wasn't patient with it, or maybe it was a great pitch by the pitcher. Maybe it was a little short, but he reached out there. Those behind Jacobs, and it gets away from him. So Jacobs advancing to second. Will he be aggressive and go to third? That ball went way down the line. He rounds second. Landing makes a good throw over to third, but the third baseman bobbles it. So Central Jacobs, great base run, and advances from first to third on a misplayed pickoff attempt. You don't see that very often. No, that just like I said earlier, make something happen here toward the top of the order, and they're – they got a couple of breaks there. I mean, the base runner would have, for Central would have been out by uh, probably 10 feet had it been a good throw. But uh, uh, third baseman bobbled it and came in there safe. Now we need a big knock by Oaks to drive him in. Good pitch from Kaysen, but it misses off the outside corner. So Oaks ahead, one ball, no strikes. And now the big thing about that is now you're a pass ball away from taking the, taking the lead here in the bottom of the fifth. And Alma, oh, Jacobs caught in no man's land. Catcher throws behind him. Now he's in a pickle. So it's catcher to third, back to the pitcher, and now he's forced out at the plate. So tough break. Central has a short backstop back here. Catcher made a good play on recovering on the pass ball. Jacobs retired on a 2-5-1 put out on the pickle. So now we've seen both teams with a rundown base running mistake. So that's a tough one to swallow. But the game is still tied 1-1, one one, and that sends us to the top of the sixth inning. Polk County will be at their 5-6-7 spot with Just Green, Zanton Branham, and Cade Brewer. Zach Derrick still on the hill for the Chargers as he takes a few warm-up pitches. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back as we head to the top of the six. Central with a tough base running error there as Jacobs was retired at the plate. But it is a tie game, one to one here in the top of the six. Great game. And Derek catches the outside corner for a first pitch strike. Polk County's led off by Just Green. He's one for two on the night. He struck out in the first inning, reached on a single in the third inning. Showed Bunn on the first pitch, pulled it back for a strike. And then Derek paints the outside corner on the second pitch. So no balls, two strikes quickly ahead. Left-handed hitting green, left-handed pitching Derek. Loses control of a, fa of a little off-speed pitch there. Knocks him down to his to the ground there. Polk County took a little bit of an exception, but i got to think if you're trying to come up and in, you're not going to throw a curveball there. And that was a little bit of a missed spot, I would think. Well, I can't imagine you come in tight with a fastball even. I'd go outside with a fastball in that situation. But uh, you certainly wouldn't um, – Try to prevent base runners in any way you can in this situation. 1-1 one, one game in the top of six. Now after an up and in, that sets up you a perfect pitch on the outside corner, which is where he comes, but he misses off the outside corner. So two balls, two strikes to Just Green. Zach Derrick on the mound. That was his 79th pitch of the game, tapping into number 80 right here. Great two-strike pitch, but misses off the outside corner by a couple inches. Doesn't get the call, so that brings the count full three balls, two strikes. Want to try to keep that leadoff hitter off the base. And he blows it by him on the inside corner, so perfectly executed by Zach Derrick and Wilcox as he blows it by him for the first out of the inning. So just green down swinging. That brings up Branham, the catcher for Polk County. He's 0 for 2 on the night, grounded out to short and struck out swinging in third. That was Derek's seventh strikeout of the game. 
Paints the outside corner for a first pitch strike. It's exactly what you want to see from Derek right now. First pitch strikes and keep rolling. Comes back in with another good fastball. Tough play for Hammond at third base. He picks it cleanly. That's a tough throw on the run. It gets away from Oaks at first, and that allows him to reach second. So that's probably – it's going to be an error on the throw either way that allows him to reach second. We'll see if they rule that a hit or an error. That's a tough play. But either way, that puts Branham on second base. Seems like almost every hitter yeah, for Polk County so has, has, has had those infield high hop hits where it hits the turf or hits the infield and takes a big hop. Makes a difficult play for the central infielder to make it. That was tough play for Hammonds to make a good throw in that situation. So another tough break for central here. So that's going to go down as a single for Branham. Then he advanced to second on the throwing error by Hammond. First pitch misses, so one ball, no strikes. And hitting for Polk County right now is Cade Brewer, the designated hitter. He's 0 for 1 on the night, reached via a walk, and then grounded out right back to Derek. Misses off the outside corner, so two balls, no strikes. Things are starting to get a little chirpy here. Yeah, just don't get don't get frustrated if you're Derek. Don't uh, start trying to over pitch. Just do your thing. You've thrown the ball well for uh, five innings. Great pitch there. Catches the inside corner, so two balls, one strike from Derek to Brewer. Easy to let your emotions get to you after uh, – Something like that, the base runner reached on that play previously. Another good pitch, and he swings through it. So Derek falls behind two balls, no strikes, bounces back to a two-ball, two-strike count. Green on second base. I'm sorry, Branham on second base. Brewer hitting with man on second, one out. Two balls, two-strike count. Not exactly sure what's going on here. Umpires. Reaching out to both coaches or to, no, just Shepard? Not even really sure what, what it's about here. They're looking in the stands maybe. I don't really know. But either way, hopefully Derek can collect himself. He's battled back from a two-ball no-strike count to even the count and then having to take a little break here. Good time for another story. We were playing at Polk County when I was in high school, and the score was tied like this in the bottom of the seventh. There was an offense in there at that time, and the ball goes over the right fielder's head, goes in the cornfield. We don't find the ball, and Polk County wins 2-1. to one. So it looks like somebody in the central stands has been ejected. Not going to talk a lot about it. Um, Thank you tonight to Bogus Videography for allowing this broadcast to be possible. So now that that's all settled, it's a two ball, two strike count, one out, man on second for Polk County. Athletic director uh, taking charge there, making sure that uh, everything's all right. So now hopefully Derek had a chance to collect himself, comes back. Misses off the outside corner, so that brings it to a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Deep breath. Settle down. Big pitch right here in this situation. Derek and the Chargers defense has done very well all night getting out of any kind of damage. Ball right back to Derek. He jumps, makes a good play. Runner takes off for third. Oaks throws over there. Hammond does a good job of keeping it in front of him. So a 1-3 put out from Derek to Oaks. And I think everybody had a little <laughs> – takes a deep breath after Hammond keeps that in front of him over there. Because if that ball gets away from him, that gives Polk County a lead. But he does a great job of blocking it up over there and keeping it in front. So that moves the runner up to third base on the 1-3 put out. Two outs in the inning, runner on third. Tanner Silvers, the right fielder for Polk County, up. He is 0 for 1. He had a sack bunt in the first, in the second inning, struck out looking in his second at bat. Pitch misses inside, one ball, no strikes. Just don't throw him anything too good. You got a base open there at first. Continue to pitch your game. Good pitch from Zach Derrick results in a foul ball from Silvers, so one ball, one strike count. Two outs, outfield playing extremely shallow for Central as they have most of the night tonight. Infield playing back, normal depth. Pitch misses up and out. Two balls, one strike to Silvers. This will be a wall, catcher. 
Don't let anything get by in this situation. That may be why you're primarily seeing fastballs right now, too. Sets up on the inside corner. Beats him, but he fouls it off down the first baseline. So back to an even count at two balls, two strikes, two outs. If you're Derek, what are you digging into in your bag right here? Well, I, I, I continue with the peppering with the fastballs, what I would do. I, I don't think I'd throw a curveball here. Outside corner. Great pit. Oh, Derek. That was borderline on being able to stick his glove. Rayburn with an incredible play up the middle. That is a very difficult play. Good decision by Zach Derrick to let it go through and trust his second baseman to make the backhand. Rayburn catches it on the big hop, turns and fires it to Oaks, fires a strike to first base. Polk County leaves yet another runner stranded on base. No runs, no hits, one man left on, no errors there in the top of the six, and that's going to bring up Central is right back to 2-3-4 with Tyler Oaks, Zach Derrick, and Aiden Plemons here in a 1-1 game as we head to the bottom of the six. Hopefully we got some excitement coming up. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for joining us tonight on Bogus Videography. Myself, Ethan Starr, Ron Starr, and Josh Bogus bringing you the broadcast tonight. It's currently a 1-1 game as we head to the bottom of the six. This is exactly what I think of when I think of Polk County McMinn Central Baseball. Exactly, yeah, and it's a great situation here for the Chargers as far as 2-3-4 in the order here in the bottom of the six. Just one run may win this thing. It very likely will as Kaysen is throwing a very good game. 61 pitches through five innings, no walks, seven strikeouts. Oaks takes the first one low and outside, so one ball, no strikes to Tyler Oaks. First baseman for the Chargers. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts tonight. That fastball catches the inside corner, one ball, one strike count. Very, very efficient. Low pitch count here in the bottom of the sixth inning, only giving up two hits. That call goes Central's way as that one apparently misses off the outside corner. So two balls, one strike to Tyler Oaks. Central Central has two hits tonight, both of them coming in the bottom of the first. Ball misses low and inside to Tyler Oaks. So three balls, one strike. Kind of surprised he didn't go back to the breaking ball again and try to hit the outside corner. That was close to being a strike. Oaks swings through the 3-1 as he was swinging to try to hit the softball building out there on that one. But he swings through it, three balls, two strikes, full count. This is a good at bat regardless of what happens. He's throwing pitches. We've not seen many six-pitch at bats. Now it's going to be a seventh pitch as Tyler Oaks fouls one down the third baseline over Central's dugout. So count remains full at three balls, two strikes. Good at bat. Your best hitter or one of your best hitters against their uh, Carson inbound pitcher. 
Ball misses off the outside corner, so that's a first walk of the night for Kaysen. And that's the same pitch he called a ball in this same at bat, so he was consistent there. That's a tough pitch if you're Kaysen, but great result if you're the Chargers. So Oaks draws a leadoff walk here in the bottom of the six. That rolls it to Zach Derrick. He's 0 for 2 on the night. He struck out looking in the first, reached on an error in the third. Now he's hitting with Tyler Oaks on first base. Nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. Central looking to scratch a run across the board and see if Derek can slam the door in the seventh. On the high school level, I guess you do not have re-entry if you pinch run for Oaks. You, you can do. do it once. Yep, you can re-enter yep. one time. Derek squares to bunt. He pulls it back and it gets away from the catcher, hits the umpire, and kicks down the third baseline. So Oaks is going to make it to second on the pass ball. Umpire took that one off the left hip there. Uh, big bounce on the breaking ball and caught the umpire there. Tucker questioning whether or not that was a foul ball. But I guarantee the umpire didn't see it as he took it right off the leg. So as of right now, it was a pass ball. We'll see if anything changes. I doubt that they have enough evidence there to overturn anything. So that's a good break for Central as Oaks advances to second on the pass ball. That's a good point there. He... He ran pretty quick from his umpiring position after he got hit by that ball, so he, he definitely did not see if there was contact or not. And the, his partner out there is having to look at second, so there's nobody really seeing that other than him. That's a tough pitch there, and it gets over the shortstop's head from Zach Derrick, fights one off the inside corner and bloops it over the shortstop up the middle. So that's going to be a single for Zach Derrick. Oaks had to hang out to see if the shortstop was going to catch it or not. Good base running allows him to move up to third. So now we have runners on the corner after Zach Derrick's single. So Kaysen, we're going to get to see how he reacts here in some trouble. The Chargers haven't had this kind of action since the bottom of the first where they scratched off their one run of the game. That was uh, very similar to most of the Polk County <laughs> hits that they've had tonight, but uh, it'll be a line drive in the box score tomorrow, but uh, it failed perfectly right over the shortstop's head. So that brings up Aiden Plemons, who has the only RBI of the night for the Chargers, so exactly who they want up. He scored Hunter Rayburn in the first inning with a single through the 5-6 hole. He swings through the first pitch. He's behind no balls, one strike. Zach Derrick remaining in the game to run for himself at first base. Tyler Oaks advanced to third on Derrick's single. Aiden Plemons takes one off the outside corner, so one ball, one strike. You send him here, take away the force out at second. I think you absolutely do, and I'll be shocked if Shepard doesn't do that. He is extremely aggressive with hit and run calls, so we'll see. Derrick does take off. Clemens lays off the good outside pitch, so that works out perfectly. They concede Derek to second on the stolen base. So now that puts two men in scoring position for Aiden Clemens, who's been seeing the ball very well. He's one for two on the night with an RBI single in the first, then he went down swinging in the third inning. But now he's hitting with Derek on second, Oaks on third, nobody out. Catches the inside corner, so two balls, one strike. Great breaking ball. We've seen it numerous times tonight. Perfectly I'm, a I'm thrown. personally a little surprised that Polk County's not bringing the infield in here. <laughs> they only have one more swing at it, so you got to think they'd want to cut the run off at the plate, but they're not bringing them in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good swing from Plemons. A cue ball shot over the first baseman's head, and it's going to be a two RBI double for Plemons. As Oaks scores from third, Derek scores from second, and Plemons ends standing at second with a two RBI double. So a great night from Aiden Plemons as he knocks in his second and third run of the night to give Central a 3-1 to one lead. Oh, two solid rips at this end. I mean, that one just barely got over the first baseman hit head and, it, and uh, hit perfectly inside the baseline there, uh, allowing the runner from second and third to score. So big, big hit. Big swing by Plemons there to drive in two more runs. Puts the Chargers up two here in the bottom of the sixth. So Plemons going to tell everybody tomorrow he hit one off the wall there to score That's both runs, but that one never left the dirt. Went right over Lanning's head at first base, cue ball spin right into the corner, and that allowed him to go into second standing. So now Paxton comes up to plate, up to the plate. He's 0 for 1 on the night, or 0 for 2, I apologize. He's 0 for 2 on the night, hitting with Plemons on second. got to imagine he's probably swinging away here. Nope, he's dropping to bunt but he bunts it right back to the pitcher. He looks Plemons back, but he goes to third on the throw. Great base running from Aiden Plemons. So Paxson lays down the sack bunt, moves Plemons up to third. So sack one three on the bunt 
for Devin Paxson is the first out of the inning, but now you have a man on third for Corbin Frisbee, the designated hitter for the Chargers. He's 0 for 2 on the night, grounded out to the pitcher and popped up to the catcher in his second at bat. So the foul ball that was not called two or three batters ago uh, may have made a difference in this inning, may not, but uh, they did get two runs in after that. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see a foul ball. I saw a pass ball that got by him. Well, I don't mean foul ball. Hit by the <laughs> whip. Yeah, it was a foul ball. Now I'm all confused. So he swings through that one there. Falls behind no balls, one strike. Which doesn't take much at my age. Get foggy pretty quick. <laughs> Central will take it any way they can get it after the Aiden Plemons two RBI double gives them a three to one lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Another run would be nice. One out. Squares to bunt, bunts it right back to the pitcher, looks him back at third, fires it to landing at first. Plemons goes halfway down the line, then retreats back to third. Not sure if Frisbee did that on his own or if that was called, but no action there as he's forced out at first on the 5-3 put out. That'll be the second out of the inning. That brings up Austin Evans, number three, playing right field. He's 0 for 2 tonight with a ground out to shortstop and a strikeout swinging. Both of his at-bats so far, he's tried to drag bunt down the third baseline in his first two pitches, so we'll third see if he tries to do it. Yeah, third baseman knows it too. He's way up. I'd like to see him push one if he's going to bunt, push it to second base, and you're there standing up all day long. Evans turns in away from one there, and no balls or one ball, no strike count to Evans. Ball catches the outside corner for a one ball, one strike count. Two nice. outs. Nice pitch. Just take that ball and again hit a what will be a line drive in the scorebook, but just hit us a, hit another blooper and drive that run in. Evans swings through the third pitch of that bat, falls behind one ball, two strike count. That was Kaysen's 81st pitch of the game. He came into this inning with 66, 67 pitches, so this is the biggest inning the Chargers have had so far, both on the scoreboard and in the scorebook. Evans requested time, didn't get it, t stepped out of the box, and the pitcher rewarded him for it, stepped right off when he could have thrown one in there. But one ball, two strike, two outs, runner on third, Austin Evans at the plate. Misses off the outside corner, so Evans back even at two balls, two strikes. Good location again. I mean, when you're up one and two, don't throw him anything fat, and he was outside with that. Good pitch. Swings through a curveball, but it bounces in there, and the catcher tags him out. So Evans retired swinging for the third out. But Central scratches off two more runs and takes a 3-1 lead as we head to the top of the seventh. That was a big inning as Aiden Plemons had a two-RBI double. Gives Zach Derrick and the Chargers a 3-1 lead as we head to the top of the seventh. We'll see. I can I imagine that Zach Derrick will still take the mound as we head to the seventh. Polk County will be at 9-1-2 with Jesse Holden, Colton Kaysen, and Austin Buckner. And Zach Derrick is indeed headed back out. See if he can slam the door. He's thrown very well tonight. His boys just got him two runs. So we'll see if he can have a shutdown inning and end the game. While he's getting loose, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. As we head to the top of the seventh, Central took a 3-1 lead there in the bottom of the sixth on an Aiden Plemons two RBI double down the right field line. Zach Derrick still in the game for the Chargers. Misses up and out on that one. Derrick, that was his, let's see, that was his 95th pitch of the night, so he's getting up there. We'd like to see him work quick and efficiently here and slam the door. 
That one misses outside as well. So quickly behind two balls, no strikes. Polk County at the nine hole, and then it rolls back up to the top of the lineup. Holden leading off. He's 0 for 2 on the night, reached on an error and struck out swinging. Swinging at a 2-0 pitch right there. I'm not sure I would have done that, but Derek will take it as he pops it straight back up to him. I'm surprised you're not taking until you see a strike there for Polk County. That's exactly right. I mean, you're up 2-0, make him throw one right there in that situation. But the Chargers will gladly take it, and that's the first out, and that's the big out so far in the inning. Absolutely. You needed the first out before they roll it to the top of the lineup, and Colton Kaysen, who's thrown an incredible game for Polk County on the mound tonight, and he's one for three and scored Polk County's only run tonight. That one misses low. Derek behind one ball, no strikes, one out. Misses low and inside, so two balls, no strikes. Fell behind the last hitter, two balls, no strikes. Was able to battle back and get the pop-up. Catches the outside corner, two balls, one strike. Big pitch there. Um, don't want to go down 3-0 uh, in this situation in the bottom of the last inning. Another great pitch on the outside corner. Another slow roller to Paxton. Picks it clean. Throws it across the diamond. He beats it out, so that's going to be a single. But the throw gets away from Tyler Oaks at first base. But Kaysen remains at first as Oaks and Wilcox recovered it quickly. Wilcox ran a long ways there. That's impressive from your catcher to go back that up. But that's definitely going to go down as a single. That's tough play there for Paxton on the slow roller. So that's going to be more than likely a single for Kaysen. And that brings up the tying run in Austin Buckner, the third baseman for Polk County. He juggled it just a little bit, trying to get down his glove uh, with that hesitation there. I think that gave the – he made a solid throw to first base, I thought. But uh, that little hesitation there. Uh, now what's going on here? They just called him out at first base. Did anybody see what happened there? Uh, the only thing I can figure is running on the inside of the baseline. That's the only thing I can figure is he ran on the inside of the baseline. And most of the time, that's the home plate umpire's call. Uh, I don't know. That's the only thing I can figure. But uh, well, Blue will take it from Blue here with two outs in the bottom of the six. Wow, that ought to fire up Zach Derrick and the Chargers here as now the tying run is on deck instead of at the plate. So two, str two outs, nobody on. Central leading 3-1 to one here in the top of the seventh as Zach Derrick looks to slam the door here with Austin Buckner, the third baseman. He's first pitch swinging, and that should do it, folks. That should do it as Rayburn is camped under it. Plemons calls him off, and he runs all the way in from center field to second base to reel it in, and Central wins the game 3-1. to one. And Things are typical Polk County Central here with a little bit of talking going on, but Central slams the door 3-1 to one and wins the game. That's huge. Scored in the first inning, scored in the last inning. So I'm not, I'm not going to comment on anything that's going on. We'll go through the stats real quick as Derek threw a complete game, gets the W. He threw seven innings, gave up five hits, one earned run, one run, two walks, seven strikeouts. 102 pitches, 64 strikes. Central was led offensively big time by Aiden Plemons. He had all three RBIs, RBIs tonight for the Chargers, going two for three with an RBI in the first, two RBIs in the sixth. Well, if you like pitching, tonight was a good night to bet the ballpark. And, yes, Aiden Plemons picked up where he needed to, driving in all three runs. Uh, to give the Chargers the victory three to one. Both pitchers, Polk County and Central, threw the ball very well tonight. Uh, and as you said, the rivalry is strong between the two. So uh, not only between the two teams, but people in the, in the stands as well, as far as fans are concerned. A little, little jawing back and forth at the game ended. Josh, you think we can get a trip down to Polk County tomorrow night? That's probably gonna be a fun one down there. So we'll see. I'm not going to get my hopes up, but it'd be a fun one to be at. So Central takes this one tonight, three to one, to improve to four and three in the district. Polk County falls two and five in the district. 
Kaysen for for Polk County threw an incredible game tonight. Was on the bad end of a good pitcher's duel tonight as he went six innings, allowed only four hits, three three runs, all were earned. He only walked one person through six innings with eight strikeouts. Finished the game with 83 pitches. So hats off to Kaysen. He just as well as Zach Derrick deserved to win that game tonight. Yeah, I think he was four zero coming into this game, and he pitched well enough to have come away with a W. That's for sure. Good looking pitcher. Uh, glad the Chargers won't see him tomorrow night. That's for sure. So hats off to Coach Shepard, Zach Derrick, and the rest of the boys in blue for a nice win tonight, scratching out a big three to one District Three AA win. With that being said, they'll be back in action tomorrow night down at Polk County for the second game of the series. Tonight for Ethan Starr, Ron Starr, Josh Bogus. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll find out if we'll see you again soon. parent wants to think about their children growing up without them. Although we realize we can't control their future, we do have the ability to secure it through careful planning. So isn't it time to begin preparing for their future and your dreams for them? When you begin to game plan with life insurance, you're able to focus on what matters most today. Because life isn't about worrying when the storms of life will come. It's about planning on how to dance in the rain. Game plan today. Game plan for life. Contact us today to 